Welcome to the Diz Explorers Podcast. We are on episode number 27 this week, and we thank you all for joining us. Hope you enjoyed last week's episode with the Duchess, Q&A, Disneyland-heavy episode. Lots of awesome information. That's what we do. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So this week, for the first time in forever, no, I'm not going to sing it. We've got a f- <laughs> we've got a full cast. Oh, yay! So yay, yay, yay us! <laughs> yay us! So <laughs> that just means more awesomeness and more great conversation for all our lovely listeners. So since it's been a while since we've all been together, we're gonna go around the horn. So we got Adrian this week. Hello. We've got Jessica. Hi, everybody. And Melanie. Hey, y'all. And Milford. Hello. And Crystal. Hey, you all. And me, RJ. This week, we're going to start getting into the holiday spirit. We're not going to flood you with holiday stuff. I'm pretty sure we did that with Halloween. But as it gets closer to Christmas, we will definitely be sharing and speaking about more holiday stuff around different Disney properties. But this week, we are going to uh, start off with a little bit in. New stuff is big doings happening around Disney parks this weekend. With they had the Destination D event, which is kind of like the halfway between D23 Expos that they do every two years out in Anaheim. So, this past weekend, we record on Mondays, was the Destination D event down in Walt Disney World, which I so wish I could have attended. Uh, number one, for all the information that I must admit I did not get caught up on, but just to, it seemed like it was a great spot to meet Disney bloggers and and Twitter personalities in the in the Disney social universe, uh, which whom a lot I follow and a lot I converse with and interact with. So, on a personal note, it would have been awesome just to you know meet people, see face to face, shake hands, buy a drink, and so yeah, we're we're gonna touch on some some of the major news events that happened, and then we're gonna get into our main topic, which we're going to speak about holiday overlays and whether we like them, do not like them, and is there some attractions that we feel should have a holiday overlay. We'll begin with the news. I know uh, Milford had was up with a lot of it, so we'll let him speak on some of the things that he had heard coming out of this weekend. Well, at the D23 event this last weekend, they uh, had a presentation by... Alpha Century Expedition, Expedition's founder, Marshall Lamb. Never heard of the guy, but he joined filmmaker James Cameron and Imagineer Joe Rohde, who we all know, and they gave details on the upcoming travel to Pandora, the world of Avatar. Uh, so the new part of the park, the world of Avatar, Pandora, is supposed to open summer of 2017. I know, that definitive date, that just kind of leaves it hanging, but uh, (laughs) at least we're getting some idea that it's going to open next year. Of course, we still don't have Rivers of Light, but at least we're getting Avatar Land. (laughs) Sorry, just thought I had to get that stab. That's okay. You have to. That's old news. Um, I think people are over it. (laughs) Yeah, I know. I I I think people would need to be surprised if they say it's just not working out, y'all. Yeah. No no one would be surprised at this point on that one. So they showed a lot of imagery, and I've got a couple articles that uh, came from uh, the Disney Parks blog that I've actually taken some of the pictures and rewrote some of the articles onto my site, uh, Milford on the Move. And uh, they show some of the pictures of, obviously, the rocks that you can see from the road uh, outside of Animal Kingdom. And then they have a video posted, and you really need to go watch the video because it's the Navi... 
uh, shaman. They call her a shaman of songs, which I've never heard her called that, but she actually talks to the camera and this animatronic, I'm telling you, is amazing. It's not like any of the animatronics in Little Mermaid or in Frozen at uh, Epcot. They're not, pr or the uh, minecart ride at uh, Magic Kingdom. This is actual facial animatronics. It is not a projection. And it's pretty amazing looking. So if you get a chance to Out go take a world. look at that, that's pretty cool. So there's a couple videos from the D23 event with a full booth tour of uh, Avatar Land. Uh, you can find those on YouTube. And they, they look pretty cool. And these are video, drone videos that they actually took of the land, I believe. Though that's starting to look like a model. But, oh, it is a model. But anyway, it'll give you a better idea what they look like. I know they moved some of the walls back this last week. Uh, so you can actually get back a little further into the area there by Pizza Planet. Or not Pizza Planet, but uh, Pizza Fari. Check it out. A lot of good information out there about it. So Something else they talked about. There's a new... Uh, they revealed some new information about the... Uh, Star Wars land in Hollywood Studios and what things will look like when the sun goes down. Uh, as you can see, I'm going to just read you from the article. As you can see, the land will take on a whole new dimension after dark and feature adventures and surprises around each corner. Uh, and then they have a click here. You can see a larger version of the map, and it's a pretty, pretty amazing looking map. If you look close, the image reveals a peak at what you'll discover in this all-new land located in the southwest corner of Disney's Hollywood Studios, including one of the signature attractions that lets you take control of the Millennium Falcon. Wow, that sounds really cool, and I can't <laughs> wait for it to open. If it's if they've taken, I don't know if anybody knows, but on the Disney Dream, they now have a Star Wars room for the kids, and they have a Millennium Falcon simulator in there, so. If it's that on a grander scale that becomes a ride, I'm pretty excited about it. I wanted one of those in After Hours. Yeah, I know. Hello, <laughs> missed opportunity. I think the Disney Cruise Line's missing a huge opportunity. They could sell alcohol and... Which ship and is it on? On the it's Dream. On the dream. All right, well, I can totally shave and act like a 12-year-old because I'm a short dude, so I'm good. I'm getting in that kid's club. <laughs> they have open houses. Please don't be creepy. They have open houses where adults are welcome into yeah, the kid's the club. the first day so. of the cruise. Yeah, but I don't share nice, so <laughs> they get me out. Oh, that's all right. You get there me were out. a lot of other adults that day I went in there that didn't share nice either. So. We, we don't know. Just either. saying. It's okay. <laughs> so there's a lot of good information out there about the uh, Star Wars lands. You can check out their articles. Um, they've got a pretty good, there's a really nice picture of what the land's going to look like. And this one happens to have a X-Wing fighter looking like it's coming into there. So it's it's all a representation. It's not an actual model or anything. It's a artist rendering. So more to speak. There were a couple other things that happened at D23, one which was kind of uneventful, which I know Melanie's all excited about. They announced <laughs> that they previewed the new Sorcerer class buses Bus. for the transportation system. Uh... How many of us are excited about new buses? Not. <laughs> I have said it once, I mean, it's I got some cool stuff in it, times. but... There is nothing magical about a bus. Yeah. Nothing. Yeah. <laughs> So, you can put neon lights and Darth Vader's voice in it all you basically want. Basically, the gist of it is, is the no. bus knows who's on the bus. So if somebody walks on and it appears to me it reads everybody's magic, magic band. bands. And if somebody's birthday is that day, it, da, 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 we have a birthday guest on the bus. Okay. <laughs> I could have told that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but then it's got flashing lights, and they play music while it's driving along, and they tell you about all the other things that are going on in the Disney universe. Did the Imagineers new movies have a that are coming in out? Vegas? Did the Imagineers yeah, I don't have a know. They must Vegas, have. Because that's what it looks like. <laughs> it looks like a Vegas party bus. And go ahead and say it. The poles that the guests. <laughs> 
hold on to the standing guests hold on to poles it just with the neon lights and the party music it's just begging for stripper <laughs> comparisons it, it's like they want us to make that jump to the after hours of, um, I'm just no <laughs> I mean but is it's there f- just <laughs> add strippers and you're in Vegas it's like mix add water and mix just add strippers but now like, no. will, will, will there be Mickey head glitter or just regular glitter <laughs> <laughs> oh, RJ, RJ, RJ. Oh. No. The people want to know. Um, look, my, my main gripe with this <laughs> is this, is that if the Imagineers can put this much effort into trying to make you enjoy a bus, then they can put a little effort into finding some sort of alternate form of transportation. This is Walt Disney World. Alternate forms of transportation is kind of their thing. You can't tell me they cannot think of something to get buses off the roadways to transport guests from resorts to parks and from parks to parks that don't involve buses. Like New a York City can Utilidor transport system. millions of people. Well, I think the... One off the road. I mean, there, there has to be a way, and it doesn't necessarily need to be the monorail. I know the monorail holds a special place in my heart and in, in many people's hearts. But the last time I was there, the monorail had to be rebooted every time it stopped. I could even see a monorail-free type of transportation. It doesn't have to be an extension of the monorail, but some sort of rail transport, some sort of mass transport. Mass transit, yeah. That does not, yeah, that does not involve buses. Buses take you to work. Buses take kids to school. <laughs> Those things hiss when they open the doors. For guests who are in ECVs or wheelchairs, they're not exactly user friendly. The hmm. whole entire bus has to stop. There has to be somewhere for for them to roll on efficiently, so that everyone has a better transportation experience. Because this is Disney World. You can't tell me they don't have someone there creating this stuff in their sleep. They have the most creative talent in the universe. Come on, you don't like At that ear call. piercing. And they, made a, and they made a bus that already exists in Vegas. I'm sure it does. I've never been to Vegas, but I cannot imagine Vegas existing without that bus. Vegas is a, <laughs> Vegas is a straight line. I think pretty much everybody walks or just stumbles where they have to go, or maybe that was just me. But, <laughs> but they have to get there from the airport somehow. <laughs> yeah, I don't, They've don't, gotta get, I don't remember that part. <laughs> That's a whole nother story, y'all. <laughs> I got there and I got home. <laughs> but yeah, I'm like, that, that bus looks like it belongs in Vegas, not Disney World. Yeah, it is quite obnoxious, I, I will say that. Even the newer ones before that, that had the big accordion style, we have those in the oh. we have those in the town I live in. I've had the misfortune of riding one of those ones. Yeah. Once. Thank God they, they only use them for all-stars. They use them for the busy routes, yeah. But, and that's what they use them here in my town. Yeah, I was at Art of Animation, yeah. and it was... Same thing. Yeah. Oh. And they shoehorn you in them thing. Mm. Yeah, I, I... So... Oh, sorry. No, no, go ahead. I was just going to... Nothing magical about a bus. It's all up No. I was uh, just going to say gonna... about the monorails. It's just... It's it's a shame because they're anti... Well, this. they're antiquated. And it's... The cost to replace them is, you know, probably in the trillions now. It was millions when they redid them in the... Whenever they redid them in the late 80s, early 90s, when they mm-hmm. got this batch of the Mark sevens i think they have now yeah. and they're sh- i mean you know they they smell like a dumpster when you get on them and it's terrible i mean i don't know how they can't sanitize them at least to get the smell well, out but you know this week they had one crash into the switcher yeah they're they they need to redo that that again a whole nother episode which makes me sad because i love the monorail it, it's oh absolutely part of my disney history and but you know, staying at the contemporary of all places and to have as many issues with the monorail as I experienced when I finally, you know, I was finally got to stay there and I was so excited and it was still exciting to see the monorail come through the A-frame every time it did. It still made me feel like a four-year-old again, but riding it was borderline painful. Well, <laughs> it and really it- was. And then when you realize what the what the upcharge is for those deluxe hotels on the monorail loop, and then the thing is down half the time, or it's on a construction schedule, it, yeah. and it's only running it, it part of the day, de- you know, it's right. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, and 
for it to have to reboot every single time. Every time it stopped, it was like a 10 minute wait. Yeah, that's. For it to restart. Yeah, that's ridiculous. With every stop. Right. <laughs> I was like, this, it takes, made a 20 minute trip last an hour and a half. Right. And we're like, okay. And you're exhausted because you're, you know, you're trying yeah. to get back to your resort or you're trying to get from one place to another. It, it was not good. No. So I, I'm hoping that the Disney transportation takes advantage of the imaginative engineering and imagineering talent that Disney has. And they, they, I'm hoping that they're coming up with something. Are we supposed something. to have teleporters by now? <laughs> <laughs> right. Or floaty shoes and floaty skateboards. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Flying cars. I'll take the little hover chairs from Wally. I mean, come on, something. I don't know. Yeah. All right. Well, I think we. De- I think we beat that dead bus today. <laughs> Are we going to the cabanas now? Uh, um, no, I got one more. I got one more before the cabanas. Before the Almost cabanas. To the cabanas. It's okay. another one that you'll probably like. So. <laughs> So, uh, Disney also announced at D23 that there's a Magic Band 2.0. Ah! Oh, right! Yeah, and, uh, yeah. they, they actually too. are a little bigger, and apparently the centerpiece where the Mickey is, actually, if you buy one of the key rings, they give you a little screwdriver, and you can actually take the screws out and take that out and put it into your key ring. Okay, so discussion. I'm excited about them. I like it. I'm... Hmm firmly on the liking it side yeah i don't know i'm in the kind of in the middle of it I, the, the, <laughs> I, i'm in the middle too i want they're the huge liking. the thing looks they yeah big. i do it looks yeah. twice the size to make my wrist look any bigger no i have i'm a tall woman so i really need nothing to make my wrist look bigger than they already it are. won't make your it'll look smaller in comparison hmm. uh, Not so. <laughs> good try though i don't know I hmm, you're so confident <laughs> I don't know. I, okay, you know. so so I'm gonna kind of go. I'm gonna go kind of the same direction. Melanie went with the buses with these magic bands. Why okay. can't I have an app on my Apple Watch that does yeah. essentially the same thing? It'll get I there eventually. And I don't need a magic band, there. or I can use my phone. I can already use Apple Pay in the parks with all the little readers but... to pay for stuff in the parks. Why can't I use that same? methodology for entrance into the park well my thing is i don't think they're ever going to go away well if they do it'll be a different because not everybody not everybody has a phone and not everybody has a right a a smart watch i get and it's a souvenir now it's a way to sell well that's what it comes down to yeah well and i I half want to believe the only reason why they changed the design was because of all the third-party people out there that were creating overlays for these things. Right. Yeah, well, it'll come with these, too. It'll just, you know... All and, it'll, it'll, and, the, and those people are... are They're creative enough. Ingenious. They'll mm-hmm. come up with a way to do it for the new ones. I, yeah. I have no doubt. But. I think, honestly, I think the new design with the pop-out feature actually encourages some more creative ways to accessorize that from third-party Yeah. Users. Oh, you're going to have people great. making I've, everything. I mean, there's going to be People walking around like Flavor Flav with things around their neck with this <laughs> with this giant thing, and you got to scan your clock when you walk into the I park. Think, and <laughs> well, I think that you know having you know the medallion type of makes a little bit more sense because I'm all, I'm kind of curious as to what happened to trading pin sales now that people no longer need lanyards for those key to the world cards. Mm-hmm. Because my kids always just wanted pins for their lanyards. Well, now we have magic bands, and they don't wear their lanyards, so. They don't even stop by the pins anymore. Well, if you've they, noticed, a lot of the pin carts aren't there anymore. No, it's just so, the big locations are there. The big pin place at Epcot. You've got the big pin exactly. place. Exactly. So I'm sure pin sales took a hit, but you know, I so I'm wondering if there's going to be some kind of lanyard type accessory, lanyard magic band. I, you know, I'm yeah, sure probably. they'll come up with some some neat things. I'm I'm more hoping that they come up with some better color choices. I don't always want to be I mean, I know I'm at Disney, but I don't always want to be in neon. I'm like thinking how about some blacks yeah. or some navy blues or some Yeah, I've blue already blue got blue. every color. I don't even order them anymore. So what I'm hoping they're not going to say is that the old bands are no good. Mm-hmm. As long as they have to say I haven't color, heard anybody say that. that so. Yeah. Maybe the... I just want some better colors. I'm, they'll probably f- start phasing them out. Colors. 
as this one becomes more mainstream, you know, once all the there shouldn't be any bugs with this one because this is honestly this is what they were gearing towards in the beginning. To begin all, with, all the stuff that's now coming out that's that's wowing everybody. This was all what was supposed to happen right away, but they just couldn't perfect on it. So instead of announcing everything wow. and throwing it all out there like they tried to do with Rivers of Light and having it fail, I was just thinking that <laughs> they actually were <laughs> smart with the approach of this, and they've been perfecting all the other. Little aspects. little aspects of it that are now going to be start rolling out that is going to make it more integrated and hopefully more streamlined but right. in within that i still think and maybe they have and they just haven't flipped the switch their wi-fi system still needs now i'm not a tech person i'm not a super computer person but i tell you what when i'm in the park if it's a busy day I shut my Wi-Fi off because it just it just there's too many people doing the same thing between Facebook Live, Periscope, and Twitter videos, and Instagram, and whatever the hell else, Snapchat. Wow. It just sucks the system down so bad. I mean, I have a good plan with a ridiculous amount of data, so I could care less. But for people who don't, it's got to yeah. suck when you're standing there trying to rejigger your fast passes or try to get that last minute dining reservation and the friggin' thing is just spinning and spinning and spinning sucking your battery down well and i wouldn't use disney park wi-fi anyway it's the most unsecure thing in the world it's got to be it's, yeah it's they don't even be. have you do there's nothing they even have you do a key or anything else nope. anymore there's nothing to log in it just once you once you're there it just kicks on on and off whenever yep. you're whenever you get on property near a, a repeater or, or however the hell the thing works but yeah. i think Honestly, kind of, even if the technology wasn't there, I think warming us as guests up slowly, like, here's your magic band, so this is your key, you know, this this replaces the key to the world. So just the first simple step to now that it's integrating more features and my Disney experience, getting the bugs out of that, you know, so that everything between the app, the website, and your wrist works seamlessly now. I think we've been brought along over the last two two and a half years since these bands have come into play so that now we're ready for something with more features oh no kind doubt of, you know it's kind of like the progression of the ipod to the iphone to where we are now with the i to the apple watch so i keep trying to call it the iWatch. <laughs> <laughs> close enough so I, I think you know apple has kind of moved us along one concept of time i think disney's doing the same thing with guests so that you know sh we were used to those key to the world cards and then when those magic bands came we were like oh thank goodness i don't have to keep track of those cards anymore i'm i'm still hoping that disney cruise line really gets on board with magic band technology because that would make swimming and being a guest week be so much easier if i didn't have to well and they did it they did it at the kids club they're actually using the magic bands in the kids they club. are using the magic bands and i heard um over on dcl prep school one of my readers said that they activated her child's wristband from the cruise ship over at the beach club, and they could use it as a magic band at the parks. Yeah. Oh, wow. The I same. had no idea. Because at the beginning, yeah. you couldn't do that. At the beginning, nope. it was just just the ships when the bands were yellow. Now they're blue. Yep. And they have characters on them. Well, they, so, did, they had a different frequency. Mm-hmm. So now yeah. they even those magic bands have upgraded. Now have yeah. they... So I, I'm hoping... Go ahead. No, I was going to ask, has, has there been any rumblings about the two new ships, if it's going to have the system integrated in it, whether whether they start to use Rumbling it right away? about the new ships is pretty quiet right now. Pretty mum. We, just know, we know nothing. Yeah, yeah you won't hear anything ships. until about a year, year and a half out. Yeah, it, it's still Then you'll wait, start getting wait. some details of what will be mm -hmm. in it. Right. So. Once we see renderings, once we have a, a little bit of an idea of what's going to be new on those ships versus what we already have. So, yeah. Well, but, the last two ships, we didn't get anything until they set the keel. Mm -hmm. Right. I just hope so. we get a new modern Marvel special so I can watch something else on TV about him. <laughs> I'm just yeah. wondering what else they're going to do with the magic bands in the parks. I mean, what, what else can a magic band do? I mean, it's a band. That's a loaded a question. Yeah. Exactly. It's a so, I'm wondering what else can the thing do? I mean, it, it's already kind of attractive. Yeah. Device. I mean, can we? Can I just implant it under my skin because you know <laughs> Careful. it's way more Careful. efficient, <laughs> and I wouldn't have to replace it. Um, <laughs> something. You know, I could like track my kids throughout the world with it. You know? <laughs> 
that once they're off in college, I want, you know, a way to track them. <laughs> it would make me as a parent feel better. You know, once they're out of my house, I'd still like to be able to do the where's my iPhone thing and just find my kid. <laughs> but I, I'm wondering what else they have in store for the Magic Means, because obviously 2.0 kind of leads me to think, well, what's 3.0 going to look like? Now, I'm kind of curious. And I'm like I said, you know, I, I'm a simple girl. I'm just hoping for more colors. <laughs> so all I want is some more colors. <laughs> yeah. All right. So next, I know this is everybody's favorite subject. So <laughs> this week they added tent-like cabanas at the Magic Kingdom, and currently they're located in the space between Space Mountain entrance queue and the bathrooms. If you know your way around Tomorrowland, mm-hmm. which is pretty and, much the uh, smoking section of Tomorrowland. Yeah, I'm guessing they threw all the smokers out because it's right in that area. Oh. So I, no, I just... kind of mixed on this. The whole the price structure really stinks. <laughs> it's like six hundred and fifty dollars for a cabana, though they don't tell me they don't they don't say how many people you can take in and out of this thing though. I don't see that printed anywhere. So when you rent a cabana. And they're 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 available as of the twenty seventh of November. Huh. Oh, it can accommodate up to eight guests. I'm sorry, it does say there we that. Go. For the daily rental price of six hundred and forty nine dollars. Okay. Amenities in the Kingdom Cabanas include private and shaded seating, cold beverages, snacks, a lockable storage trunk, electronic device charging stations. Sunscreen, hand sanitizer, insect repellent, a small refrigerator, one fruit basket, a one-time delivery of ice cream novelties and desserts, personalized Mickey ears, and reserved spew re- reserved spewing space. <laughs> reserved spewing space for parades and fireworks. Bookings okay. for bananas are now open, uh, or by calling. 407 WDW Play or visiting Concierge at any Disney World Resort Hotel. 407 WDW Play. That's the new thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So not even through, not even through the normal booking methods for hotel. How many rooms. cabanas mm. are there in total? Do right. You know? It doesn't say. That's the other part. It, it doesn't say how many there are. Uh, this picture that a reader posted shows it looks like five of them in that space. All right, so I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that somebody got something confused and probably those fancy poles and neon lights on the buses probably <laughs> should be in the cabanas for $650. <laughs> it would be thematically correct. It would be more correct to have the neon lights in Tomorrowland than tents. Uh, you know, I mean, jeez. Because I would think tents <laughs> belong in Frontierland. Yeah. I mean, they are basically... They look like like they you're going like to an outdoor like wedding. Our, they look like a they, they look like a voting booth. <laughs> They're not attractive. I will defend the idea of the cabana. No, you're wrong. A cabana look, <laughs> I do not defend the style or the execution so far. I of these cabanas. Yeah. It just. I mean, uh, the they picture they worked... show the inside with the kind of like it's like a sectional and a footstool mm-hmm. and, right. and the hats, beach towels. I mean, it looks nice inside. Well, so I wonder if maybe this is just a test and if it I'm goes well, it's then they're going to build permanent structures. Yeah, but that's even more asinine. That, that's that. even more asinine if they're going to build. I yeah. mean, are you serious? I get it. People get tired during the day, but really, you know what, to me. It, it's like an it it seems like it's it's a push towards more of an elitist thing. Who in their right mind when you're paying all this money to stay in in a hotel that granted we just talked about buses and it's not as easy to get back, but seriously you're going to pay you $650 no, it's, to It's going to be a family who are frequent guests who do not need to be in line for every attraction. They're not they're not the kind of guests who ha- are attraction hoppers who need to see everything it's going to be the guests who have small kids and older kids like the mixed family types who have children who need to rest but they maybe i mean if even if you're going to the monorail resorts it takes an hour sometimes to get from the park to your resort 
and then you're at your resort for a while and then another hour to get back when really all you need is a half hour 45 minutes of peace and quiet to recharge yourselves and your cell phones that's what the care that's, that's what that's what the hall for. of presidents and, is for which we all know just thrills four and five year olds <laughs> they just love yeah but hall you're not going to have hall of presidents for the next three months so and then six months we are yeah we're not talking about that um but I, I think the cabanas are not a bad idea. Bush Gardens executes the cabanas very well, although the price structure isn't nearly what it is at Walt Disney World. They do have cabanas. Um, they're off the beaten path. Therefore, you know, you can eat over there. You can just relax. And in, it's in a beautiful garden area of Bush Gardens. But I, I think the idea of the cabana is a good one. I'm not defending the price structure by any stretch, but it, it's going to appeal to a certain clientele who just does not want to take up two to three hours to head back to their hotel. They want to be in the parks, but they want to take their time in the parks. I get it. I understand it. I think they're tacky as sin in their current incarnation. I'm hoping that much, you know, I, I'm hoping that somebody's got a better design planned for them because I think throwing up a tent in Tomorrowland is crass and oh, it no, goes it, against it, everything that Disney's supposed to be about immersion and theming and it, it goes uh, against theming even worse than the cost it goes against theming you said it perfect like you're it's that I think that's what bugs I'm the more you've talked the more you've kind of gotten me on okay I can see why somebody might possibly want to do that. So I'm, I'm getting your side of what you're saying, but that's what upsets me more than anything. Oh, and I I'm on board with that. I, I think yeah. they're, they're crass in their current incarnation. They're awful. Yeah. I think I if they wanted to do them over in Frontierland or Adventureland, I think some kind of tent, like an archaeologist kind of style tent would go over very well, like an Indiana Jones kind of thing. I, I can see that kind of a tent type it may be a, a khaki tent, not these white things. Right. But I, I can see a tent type structure going over well in, over on that side of the park. But they, they would need to modernize it. It needs to fit the space. See the um, Fantasyland, maybe do some sort of circus type thing over in the circus area. I could see that kind mm -hmm. of a tent. There are there are ways to execute a tent that are thematically correct, and we just aren't there yet. But and I, don't I think. think that, I don't think the benefits are strong enough yet. I mean, if it was like free food and beer all day or something, right. I feel like that would motivate you to actually hang out in the tent. But it's like you're going to get some Mickey ice cream bars and recharge <laughs> your phone for $700. Now, yeah. put one of those up at uh, Wine and Food Festival and tell me you're going to bring me food from every booth at <laughs> Wine and Food Festival. I'm in. <laughs> I think even having it in one of those underused World Showcase areas where I could just like even – Personally, we're not because even on Castaway Key, they do not bring you your meals. Even on Castaway nope. Key, you have to go out to Cookies or go down to Serenity Bay and get your meals there. And you can bring them back to your cabanas, but you they, there's no food service. They do have snacks, they do have fruit baskets in the cabanas, and the mini fridge, and the safe. And much, I mean, it sounds like the tinted version of the Castaway Cabana yeah, is what it, it sounds is. like. And and I adore the cabanas on castaway key so i think I, I see where there could be benefit as long as a it's thematically correct and b the benefits of having you know what what's there the, the drinks the you know the ice cream that I, I love the idea of the reserved seating at certain places but is there any it, way that this was it's not there yet yeah, is there any way that this was just, like, misconstrued? Has Disney formally announced that they're doing cabanas? Because, you know, my first thought was this seems like something that would be set up for actors or actresses during the filming of the Disney parade for Christmas. It just doesn't seem like it's, like, a legit thing that Disney would do. Well, I, thought... I mean, it's got a phone number associated with it. Ooh, good point. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't want to believe it And maybe it to be they true. set it up for that purpose, and then they're going to see if guests will pay to partake yeah i felt because, like it was I mean, a testing thing stage. too did you have the stage or do they, do they still have the stage over in tomorrowland or did they get rid of that no it's still there yeah it's you know, still so there probably some acts who are going to be playing there for the 
the taping of the. Well, that's already over. That's with. all. That was that's done all done. Week. That's what I'm saying. That there there could have been acts over there that used those. I think that's a. I think maybe onto something with that. And they just left them to see if guests wanted to use them too. Wrong. Yeah, yeah but they've also made wrong. the comment they're that they're going to put them in Hollywood <laughs> Studios and Ep- right and Epcot. So I will say Where with the lack Epcot? of shade in Epcot, I might pay for it there. Not really, but <laughs> or Animal Kingdom. <laughs> Like are no they going to be air conditioned? Yeah, they're air conditioned. Uh, are they? Okay. I thought it just said shaded. Uh, I didn't read air conditioning. It says shaded but... seating, but I read another article someplace that said air conditioning. Hmm. I mean, it I does have a need... it does have a thing on the front that you can actually pull closed. So I'd be shocked if they weren't. I think unlimited hmm. fast passes would sell me on it. There you go. If they're in the magic, yes. if they're in the magic kingdom. Uh, yes. okay. Then what they should do is they should put a cooler in there with something to drink that's not soda and water. Give me a six pack or something and make make the perk that way. In the other parks, oh, I could care less. If I want air conditioning, there's bars. I'll go into the bar and you know get my air conditioning and a cold drink. <laughs> but I don't know. I know all the bartenders that tune in lounge by name. So oh <laughs> yes, wait, but, did I say that out loud? The four year olds. That not going to want to go to the bar. And the, when the four-year-old is cranky and hot and tired, and again, the, they, just need, they just need an hour, but, or they need, or mom needs to recharge herself because when you're pushing that stroller all over the place, having your own space, especially on days when it's wall-to-wall people, like, it, you know, the holiday times or, or super busy times, Having space, having real estate that no one else can come into is priceless. And that's where Cabana's on Cast Week, he kind of come into play because you're on a ship around so many people for days on end and, and there, it's beautiful and you love the ship. But then when you get to that cabana and that space is your space for, you know, five, six, seven yeah, hours. Yeah, you can get away with everybody. You can get How away much does it cost on Castaway Key? It, there, there's a different price structure for all of them. It's anywhere from four to eight hundred dollars. It's four ninety nine on the family beach. Mm-hmm. It's three ninety nine over on the adult beach. And three ninety nine over price, on the adult beach. But it is now price structured by time of year. So. Oh, that's they, right. I forgot to change that. But they did, and what we did find out about the price structure is that even if you set sail in September. But your day on Castaway Key is in October. You get the October rate, even if you depart on September 29th, like we did. We were actually on the island on October 1st, so we get the yeah. October pricing. So that that was nice because that was a better price. <laughs> so, but yeah, it you have your own space and the service. I mean, if you're looking for that concierge or club level service, that that's going to be there. Do you get an attendant at these cabanas? Because that's part of the perks is having an attendant you know yeah. you can bring those refills of once we you know had climbed through all of our sodas and water which on that day we did you know they come back they do the refills and I, i'm assuming in the other parks they could potentially bring you drinks and alcoholic drinks that they couldn't ever at magic kingdom but if they're going to have these at hollywood studios or epcot that you could have an attendant bring you adult beverages and things like yeah. that I mean, having a, an ups, that that kind of a charge, as long as the service warrants it. If it's that level of service, I can see it a thousand percent. And the theming is correct. I, I'm big on how what stories are being told. What yeah. Will, you know, yeah. Is, does it fit the land? I think does they just fit? look ugly. Just white tents standing up there. <laughs> they are super ugly. And they do not belong in Tomorrowland um, unless they're trying to, like, do something, you know, on Mars, and you're like <laughs> stranded on Mars. I, I I don't know what story you could tell with that kind of a cabana. Cabanas don't belong in Tomorrowland anyway. But hmm. hopefully they're just testing it out, dealers. Although everything, all the comment sections online are harsh. People brutal. are hating. They're brutal, and I'm like thinking. I saw them. And I'm like, yeah, they're ugly, but I I like it because. I mean, I, I wouldn't say, I, I think that the price is kind of outrageous. Yeah. But, because on Castaway Key, the thing is, is there's only a few things that people really want to do. I mean, you want to snorkel, you want to ride your bike, but that still leaves a lot of time for hanging out in the cabana. 
Well, and that stuff's included when you get the cabana, too. And You're not paying included. extra for it. You're not. But that the, leaves a lot of time to enjoy the cabana. When I'm at Magic Kingdom or at Epcot, there is so much I want to do. I'm just wondering how much time in the day I would actually have to yeah. enjoy the cabana mm-hmm. itself. I'm not but thinking I want to spend thinking... $650 to spend to two sit. hours in a cabana. No. Throughout the day. And I think, RJ, was it you who said it It sound, It made it a little more elitist? I think yeah. that that's my other big issue with this is that Disney is starting to get a reputation of it's only for, it's not a family vacation anymore. It's only for those who can really, truly afford it. Yeah. And I feel like this just kind of smacks in the face of that again. Yes. You know? No doubt. So, I mean, they upped the prices of the dessert parties and now they've got the the cruise parties that are more expensive and and now they're saying here come spend a hundred dollars a day and spend an extra 650 to get your own private i don't know right well and and the other thing is all right so there's five of these things now there's a reservation number so it's not first come first serve you have to reserve it so really unlike these busy days like uh, melanie or milford were saying before Say it's, you know, during the Christmas peak season, which is coming up. You're going to get a family of tired people who've never been there before. They want to rent a cabana. Nah, it's, you know, somebody rented it. But yeah. either they're not in it, they're not using it all day. So it's not going to be, I don't know how it's going to play to that. You know, unless you had a hundred of these friggin' things all over the park for people to go and take a rest in. I mean, I don't know. I, I, I mean, yeah. I, I think I, I think they I, could I, start with the five and see what the response is and build accordingly. Who well, people are going to use it. And there's really oh, yeah, there's always people who have the money to use it. People are going to use it, and it's it's it may not be a smash hit, but if it works out for them for to slap these friggin' things up and and half ass theme them, I mean, I don't know. There's so much other stuff that needs to be improved and worked oh, on no throughout no Walt doubt. Disney World. That if this is – I don't know what the end game of it is. Maybe it's something completely different and I'm just – it's the, just – I don't know. I mean it, it seems what I want to useless hope, to me. What I want to hope is that they are targeting the families who come quite a bit, who don't want to spend three hours out of their day to head back to the resorts. You know, it, it's going to be those families who don't have to hit every attraction every time they come to the park because they come frequently enough. You know, I, I want to say that that's who they're targeting. You know, the repeat guests with the means to afford that. You know, the repeat guests who don't have any qualms about taking two week long Walt Disney World vacations a year. That that that's their target demo, and more power to them. Yeah, I, I mean, I guess so. I, 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 there's always people who are going to be able to pay it, or will it be willing to pay it, whether they're able to or not. There's always people willing to pay for something like that. I, I'm not, as a cabana lover on Castaway Key, I'm not saying that I personally find that appealing, although I see the demographic that they're thinking of with it. And, and hey, if they can get an extra $650 a person out of that, or per family out of that, hey, they are geniuses at finding ways to make money. Oh yeah, no doubt. I just wish I mean, they were geniuses at finding a better way to transport guests around the park. There's no <laughs> money in that, right? <laughs> Although you think that what they could save with gas and wear and tear on those buses, that they find a better way to transport people around. <laughs> that is my, that's my take on it. All. I don't know. I'm not sold yet. I'm not there yet, but I, I hope that they're going in a good direction with it. Yeah. I love like a, I think a half day rental would be ideal. I I, w- I could honestly see that more than a full day rental. That would make more sense logistically. Maybe not pr- mm-hmm. even price point for them. If they did maximum three hour clip and it was like you know oh, whatever. Sure. Even if you wanted to do a hundred dollars an hour just to be obnoxious about it for three hundred bucks or two fifty or some nonsense like that. Sure. They'd, Absolutely. they'd probably do better at that. Have either have a waiting list in the morning, depending on how the park is, and not even oh, do I think that's genius. a reservation system because then it's just and maybe the people at Gen- at Disney are listening to this because I, I think I do think they could probably make more money if they rented them by the hour. You know, I, I mean well, maybe it's it hard less for them in the morning. Day. I still wouldn't agree with it, but that would be a better way to do it than than have a thing that because these parks are open damn near twenty hours coming up in the next couple of weeks. Yeah, and that time of year, yes, there are people that do spend from in the morning to all day because when the parks hit capacity, you're not getting in anywhere if you leave. So, mm-hmm. 
there is people that are there all day. And it takes I don't forever know. to work your way down Main Street to get out when it's super crowded. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. No, oh, definitely. You have strollers or anything to get through that crowd because I've had to weave my way in and out of that crowd before. To oh, get me, out the oh me too. No, definitely. And it takes forever. Yeah, no, definitely. So having a place in park to rest, I, I totally see it. But I, I would be more on board with the discharge me by the hour kind of thing. And maybe it's cheaper in the morning than it is in the evening, and they and and it's more expensive in the evening day, because it's including be the place mm-hmm. to watch the parade and the fireworks. Yeah, I mean they have exactly. fast pass for that. I, I I wouldn't even say include. I mean that's just another perk to get people to do it for the well, yeah. six hundred I mean, something dollars. But... Yeah. So yeah, I, I think there's a way ways to execute it and hopefully that they're, they're thinking outside the box kind of like we are here they, they need to listen to us because yeah. i think we've had some great ideas on how to make cabanas actually work for guests <laughs> instead of just dismissing the idea like so many people seem to be doing i mean the social media threads are just asking for yeah they want people's heads on, they want heads on platters <laughs> want, yeah. like, like, which is hysterical but... so harsh so harsh so. but so I think there's ways to make cabanas or the cabana concept work in the parks and work for families. Will it cost? Absolutely. This is Disney. It's, it is what it is. And But it's not like you, nobody's making anybody do it. <laughs> Only the people who are willing to do it are going to do it. So, hey, go for it. As long as they look good, they theme correctly, and the service is... That, that same service that you would experience on a Castaway Key Cabana with the, the dedicated cast members who are, you know, there for you, then I, I'm, I, could, I could potentially see where these have the potential to be good. I, I'm not going to dismiss the idea just because right now they're ugly. Yeah. And they are Oh, ugly. exactly. Yeah. No, no doubt they're ugly. <laughs> it needs work. It needs work. No doubt. Well, I can say, moving on from this, <laughs> the one thing that I did hear from people that, that did come out of the uh, Destination D thing is that it was finally brought to light plans that Epcot is on the docket to have improvements made to it. So, And that was pretty much all that was said. It was the most vague thing in the world, but for for original early years Epcot geeks like myself and many people that I follow on Twitter and have conversations constantly about this stuff it was it was hopeful because it was kind of led to believe that they were going to try to bring it keep the same vision that it was when the park first opened so that that's hopeful for me and that it's not going to just turn into intellectual properties thrown into these pavilions to just bring people through the gates that it's actually going to be a thought out thing you know i don't know that edutainment is what's going to be popular because i feel that society nowadays doesn't really take to that or want to learn when they're on vacation which is fine i understand that uh we don't need history lessons and stuff like that like you know some of the attractions were but i think it could be done in a different way in a way that'll that'll appease the masses you know new generations coming in and older generations that remember how it was and have that find that fine line between both eras, uh, which would be completely and totally awesome because Epcot being my favorite park, it's just to, to bring future old back to, to anything would be fantastic because it, it really is a shell of itself. And if it weren't for the, uh, the booze and the food and world showcase, it'd be a hard place to spend time, <laughs> especially when you have young kids, because, you know, uh, outside of a handful of not even a handful of, of attractions there's not much for for little kids to do you know they don't little kids don't care about wandering around in ambiance so you know it's hard to sell them on that that's my piece on that and i'll leave it at that okay that's all i had for news so all right well uh i know i we did say at the beginning we were gonna speak about some holiday overlays but we have run long with our news and and cabanas which is fine that's it's good sparked a lot of good conversation and a lot of views and thoughts, so there's definitely nothing wrong with that. And our topics are never set in stone. You know, we just kind of have a list of stuff we we feel we want to talk about. It's just now Thanksgiving's coming up this week. We're recording the Monday before Thanksgiving, so we've got time to next week to talk some holiday overlays. That's right. We don't want to anger the masses. I know some people don't want to know nothing about Christmas until after Thanksgiving, and I can certainly understand that. I am not one of those people. November 1st, I actually, prior to that, I was already listening to Christmas music in some form or fashion, so... As was I. 
So I really don't I care. Chris, we put the Christmas lights outside of the house today. Well, mine have been out for two weeks. I took the Halloween decorations down outside of my house the the weekend That's after why Halloween. We get along. And the I while I had the ladder up, I, they're not all up, but the the low lying ones are up, and they've been plugged in since then. And I will get the rest done this weekend when we do our tree and decoration and all that other stuff that we usually do on Thanksgiving. So nice. Yeah, I enjoy Christmas. I enjoy the decorations and the decorating, and seeing all the Disney stuff that I have that I only can see, you know, for one month out of the year. <laughs> so, so yeah, definitely, definitely. That was our news section. <laughs> we haven't done new stuff in a very long time because there literally is a million and one ways to find out Disney news all over everything. So that's kind of why we don't make it a, a habit of doing it every week on, on this podcast. We try to do different topics that we feel are a little more interesting than and stuff that you can't just find by, you know, looking on your Facebook and and Twitter feed. But there was some big stuff that they that they rolled out for this, so it definitely was worth talking about because we all did have uh, you know, reactions and comments on this before we started recording. So we just wanted to share that with you guys and uh-huh. conversation can continue after this, you know, hit us up on Twitter and, and Facebook and feel free, you know, any of us would will carry the conversation on without a doubt and you know in, in any way yay or nay with any of these topics so we definitely enjoy socializing and speaking with people through social media and all our other outlets uh-huh. so with that we are going to wrap this up I uh, personally and from the rest of the crew hope everybody has a wonderful Thanksgiving whatever you are doing with or without your family going to football games traveling as many people do for the holidays which i know very good friends of mine are leaving tuesday Uh, last year this time we were leaving with them and went down there for thanksgiving and i tell you i wish i was going again because it was probably one of the best times to be in the park if you enjoy the holidays Uh, because you get it you get a little bit of zooiness for the three days surrounding thanksgiving but pretty much after that sunday it, it drops off to nothing which is, you know, it's a, it's a lull week, that first week and a half of December. And I tell you, it was beautiful. That that Monday after Thanksgiving and the Tuesday that we were in the parks was was nice. It was almost like being there in the early fall. It was manageable crowds. In Magic Kingdom was, you know, full decked out in Christmas. The storytellers had, had already come out in, in Epcot. So it was great to see all that without the uh, craziness that, that is the weeks leading up to Christmas and New Year's. So definitely a happy Thanksgiving for me and from all of us. We thank you for listening. Head over to thedizexplorers.com and you can find all our links to all our other social media accounts on there as well as links to all of us and our individual accounts. Thank you again for listening and we will talk to everybody after the holidays.